Hi and welcome to another card making video and today I'm sharing 5 cards using products from the March card kit by Simon Says Stamp. This kit is still available so you can grab it if you like and let's take a look at what you get. First of all an ink pad and the color is tight pool. You will also get a jar of distress glaze in a similar color. And here is the cutest thing ever. These are the tongs of Simon's stamp. Those little hands are meant to be used when you are uh, heat setting something so that you don't burn your fingers. In the kit you also get dice. This uh, says happy wishes. Very versatile and you get the words as well as the outline. Now let's take a look at the stamp set, one of those big stamp sets which is full of images, flowers, leaves, a lovely motif that reminds me of folklore designs, many sentiments to play with and there is a die set available if you want to grab it as well. Today on my five cards I will however focus on the papers as I usually do, but I will use many of the sentiments from this stamp set. Now here is a, a one six by six paper which is full of bunnies, really adorable and perfect for the upcoming season. You will also get a white envelope and since you do get the embossing glaze, you will also get a mini ink cube of uh, Distress Embossing Ink. So everything you need to use that is included in the kit. Now let's take a look at the paper pad. You know I love paper and I will be focusing on my cards today on showing you ideas how you can use this paper pad. I am browsing it through. You can see the lovely colors, lovely flowers, big focal points that you can grab from here. Absolutely adore this one and I will be using this one on one of my five cards today. This is a really fun paper pad and I will show you many creative ideas. Now the last two pages are the ones that give you all those eight different uh, rectangles that can be used to create cards really quick and easy. Also three colors of cardstock, these two ones and another white one that I have already cut out. Plus you do get the zip bag to keep everything nice and neat. So let's start making some cards. I will start with the last two pages and I will cut out all those rectangles using my paper trimmer. At this stage I don't know what I want to create with them but I just want to separate them and as I look at them ideas just come to me. So here is one of the rectangles that I separated and as you can see it is really beautiful, it, is a, it even has a sentiment underneath. So if you want you can just pop it on top of your card base and you have a really quick and simple card to send. However I'm going to show you some creative ideas on how you can take this a step further and make it look more interesting. So I'm browsing through the paper pad and I'm looking for a similar flower that I can cut out. When I look at busy pattern papers like this one, I don't always look at them as patterns. Sometimes I'm able to see focal points there and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm grabbing my scissors and this is my favorite scissors lately for fuzzy cutting. This is by Simon's Stamp and that was included in one of the previous kits. And one of my favorite things to get in a card kit is tools because tools can be used again and again and uh, you pretty much have them forever. So here you see I'm fuzzy cutting this flower. This is exactly the same as the flower that is already printed on my little uh, panel. However, it is uh, a little big, bit bigger, so they are not identical. I'm also going to use my scissors and fuzzy cut some leaves and some branches from the same pattern paper. And here they are all ready to go. I'm going to use foam tape at the back of the big flower and stick it on top of my panel. I don't mind if I cover up something. I want to kind of create a dimensional cluster now with a butterfly and the other flower that are already printed. Now I'm going to tuck underneath some leaves and the branches that I cut out making sure that they go outside of the main panel. This way it's going to give it more dimension and make it look more interesting. Now on the other side where the other flower is, just to balance it out, I want to stick some flower, some leaves, but uh, you see I cannot tuck them underneath. That's why I'm grabbing my craft knife and I'm going to cut out a slit along one of the petals so that I can tuck the leaves underneath. Again adding dimension on an otherwise very flat panel. 
And this is one of the ways that I like to play with those rectangle designs. I always like to somehow pop other elements on top, make them dimensional. And of course, the other thing that you need to do is to add a sentiment. Now, on this panel, there was a printed sentiment already. However, I did cover up with a big flower a part of it. That's why I'm going to add a new one on top of it. And uh, this is going to give you the opportunity to personalize the card based on the occasion that you want to use it for. Of course, it's flowers, so it is really versatile. You can use it for pretty much anything. I'm going to stick the panel on top of my card base Another idea to add something extra is to add some blink. Here I'm using some gems. These are yellow gems for the center of the two flowers. And for the sentiment, I went with um, one from the stamp set included in the kit that says just because. And I'm going to stamp it with black ink on top of a white cardstock so that I can cut out the strip later on. And you see here I'm using my new stamp wheel. This is a new stamping platform by Alte New. I'm trying to get familiar with it and then I will make a video on different ways that you can use it. The fun part is that it is not magnetic and the paper sticks anywhere you like at the background. Also, the top part can be rotated so you can easily make one of those wreath uh, designs with uh, no effort at all. So anyway, I'm going to place it down, press, and my sentiment is ready. Now, just because it is quite uh, big, I'm going to cut it apart so I have the two words separately. And I'm going to call this card done. I think it's super adorable. Sentiment, dimension, leaves, some blink. And here are some close-up photos on the first card for today. And let's move on to the second card. And again, for the second card, I will be using one of the rectangles that we cut out in the beginning. This one says wild and free, and I think it matches perfectly with the tiger that we have, the pink tiger, in one of the pattern papers. So that's the one that I'm going to fuzzy cut. Again, here comes the scissors. I am going to cut out the tiger, leaving a little bit of a white border all around. This is going to make my job easier. And I have already said that in many of my videos, I don't mind fuzzy cutting. Actually, I find it very relaxing and uh, it doesn't take me too long. You see, this isn't a very difficult um, image to cut out. However, I'm going to make an effort and go all around the inside of the tail to get rid of that blank space there. Hold the image and turn the paper instead of turning your scissors when you fuzzy cut. And don't worry if it isn't perfect, this is a handmade card after all, nothing has to be perfectly perfect as if it was factory made. Mine definitely isn't and you can see that if you take a good look on the close-up photos. However, when you see the um, finished project, you don't really see the imperfections. You just look at the general idea. So now I'm using my scissors and I'm just roughing up the edges and I did grab one more of those rectangles that I cut out in the beginning. I'm just going to layer one on top of the other and this is another one of my go-to recipes when I'm using pattern papers. And then on top of that, I'm going to layer my tiger. Again, I do have foam tape at the back. Stick this on top of your card base. And by the way, all my card bases are four and a quarter by five and a half. And if you like, you can stop here. You can add some blink if you want. However, I'm going to use the sentiment from the same pattern paper since I have it. I'm just going to use one of my thin strips of uh, dies to cut out the label and then stick it in place. And then again, you can stop here or if you are like me and you don't know when to stop, plus you don't care if you fuzzy cut uh, tiny little images, I'm going to use again my little scissors and cut out some of the images from the same pattern paper, from the scraps, the leftovers, and just tuck them underneath that label. So here you see I created another card using two of the rectangles that we cut out in the beginning and up to now we have used three of the eight ones. And uh, here is a close-up look on this card, which I find adorable. Now, let's move on to the next card. And again, I'm using one of those rectangles, showing you even more ideas on how you can be creative with them. 
So here you see I'm turning it from a rectangle into a circle element. Now one thing that you can do is to cut out the panel from the rest of the pattern papers slightly smaller than the standard card to have a little border all around and then stick that uh, a circle on top of that. You see here I have a flower composition. I'm going to stick it over the flower so that I have all those little elements peeking from behind the circle, like the leaves, the branches, etc. I am also sticking it offset so that I have a little bit of it hanging out. This is going to make it look more interesting rather than sticking that circle at the center. Now, if you like, at this stage, you can add some uh, uh, blink if you like and call it done. However, I'm going to take it a step further and I'm going to show you one more idea that I came up with while I was looking at it. So for this one you have to be really brave. I'm taking my scissors and I'm going to completely change what I started to create. So here I'm going all around those uh, branches and elements that pick from behind of the circle and I'm cutting them out leaving a little outline to make my job easier. And of course this way I am creating a focal point that I can pop on top of my card that has a lot of interest. For the background however, to keep it quite simple but still add something extra, I'm going to add some splatters. This is black dye ink that I'm adding with a very thin brush to control the brushes to the splashes and to make sure that they are very fine. Then I'm going to add some glue at the back of my element and just pop it down. Remember this is already dimensional because the circle is stuck on top of uh, the background by using foam tape. So very clean and simple design this one, completely different than the one that I was going for. Plus I have some extra leaves that I have cut out that I'm going to stick all around the circle just to complete the design all around. Since I do have those uh, black dots from the splatters at the background, I'm going to add some uh, tiny gems from Spellbinders in black color again, only on the outside of the circle, just a few here and there. And here are some close-up photos on the third card for today. And let's move on to the next card. For this one I'm using this beautiful big flower composition. I do have a rectangle die here and I'm going to place it to cut out a panel. This panel is slightly smaller than my standard card so I can pop it on top and you see a very thin elegant border all around. And because from the beginning I was focusing on the smaller rectangles and I wanted to use those as much as possible, from this one I'm just going to cut out the uh, sentiments into separated strips so that I can stick them on top of my card pretty much using the exact same design. So I'm recreating this small one on a bigger scale and uh, I will be able to pop those sentiments on top of my card. And I also added some gems and this card couldn't be any easier but still it looks stunning. And on to the fifth card for today and let's do something more advanced. For this one I'm cutting out a panel that is slightly smaller than the standard card. Usually I go a half an inch smaller, so instead of four and a quarter by five and a half, I go three and three quarters by five. And then this is another one of my go-to recipes when I have beautiful pattern paper front and back. I like to turn one corner towards the front. This way you can see both sides of the paper. You can add some foam tape underneath if you want to keep it dimensional. You can add, um, you can keep it down by using a brad if you have a beautiful brad or a little button on the corner. You can make a flower composition just where that corner falls. But I'm going to do something completely different today, so I'm going to just temporarily hold it down with a dot of glue at the back just to make sure that this is not going to move as I do the next step. I'm going to really quickly grab my tweezers, reversible tweezers, and hold it in place. And let's move on and have some fun with wax. 
I think adding a wax seal on that corner over there is the perfect placement and you can repeat the same design again and again by using all those double-sided pattern papers that you have and you want to show both sides. So uh, you can uh, change up the colors of the wax depending on the color of the pattern paper that you are using. Here, for example, I'm going with wax that is white just because I think it's going to uh, stand nicely against uh, the background. And uh, as my wax is melting, I did use one of my uh, leaf dyes that I had in my stash. I'm sure everyone has a leaf dye somewhere in your stash so that uh, you can cut out a couple of branches and just uh, temporarily stick them down in the corner and this way they are going to be embedded with the wax when I pour it. You can also use some string, thread, whatever you like there, even a little feather. Now I have this tiny little spoon and I'm making sure that everything is completely melted so I don't have any chunks of wax in there. And take a look at the seal that I'm going to use. This is by Alta New and it has a beautiful flower. I think the design matches perfectly with the design on my pattern paper. And when I'm creating those wax seals, I'm going for the imperfection. I don't like those perfectly rounded ones. They don't look really authentic. I like them to look more organic in shape. And I'm super happy with the outcome here. However, if you like them completely round, you can definitely pour a little blob of wax on your glass mat, make the seal there, make sure that you like it, and then just stick it on top of your project. Now the wax is cool, so I can take it off, and you can see the beautiful design. By the way, I can see that we are already 16 minutes into the video and I know that the YouTube algorithm doesn't like big videos and it doesn't push them anymore. So if you do like my bigger videos, make sure to leave me a comment and leave me a click the like button. It really helps to put those videos out there. So anyway, now I'm going to use some foam tape at the pack and stick it on top of my card base. And I absolutely love the clean and simple look, the yellows and white, as well as those leaves that they pop underneath. I'm also going to cut out uh, leaves, the same leaves, and pop them underneath, but this time I just used the scrap yellow paper just to add some extra fluff on my card. Now, of course, we need a sentiment. I went with a thank you for this one, and I have some uh, golden gems that I'm going to scatter along my card. Now, if I had to pick a favorite, I think it would be really difficult. I absolutely love this yellow one with a wax seal, but I also love the one with a pink tiger. So here are some close-up photos on all the cards that I made for today. Don't forget to like, to leave me a comment. Thank you all so much for joining me today. And as always, you will find the list of the supplies that I used down below in the description. Thank you all and have a lovely day.